Yo, BJ Gador with the BJ Gador podcast. And on today's episode, very powerful one. It's coming at you at the exact time you need it. Happy New Year. All right. I want to make sure 2024 is your most fit year yet. So you walk into 2025 in the best shape of your life. And I'm going to do that by giving you my top 10 weight loss tips. All right. I'm sharing everything I know about how I went from a former fat guy to the guy that was in the cover of Men's Health Magazine. By the way, first personal trainer to ever make the cover. And it's the world's largest men's magazine. People that I grew up with when I was a fat kid, they never thought that would have been possible. But it was made possible for the 10 tips I'm going to share with you today. I'm not only proud of that, obviously, right? It was great to achieve that. And a lot of that initially, it's like, let me prove everyone wrong. Those that underestimated me, made fun of me, all that stuff. But ultimately, I did it for myself. And I've maintained it, I've built upon it, I've shared my knowledge and wisdom with millions of people in the last 20 years plus uh, in the work that I do. So uh, it's been a great journey. And you know, every year I get older, whatever physicality I may lose with the aging process, my mental strength and stamina, they go to a whole new level. And I've unlocked fitness gains over 40, I'm 41 now. I spent half my life fat and half my life fit. And I continue to find ways to improve my fitness, my total fitness. Maybe not how much muscle I have or how actually strong I am overall, but the complete spectrum of fitness, everything you want, strength, stamina, power, endurance, mobility, conditioning. I've been able to improve that over 40. So I'm gonna share some amazing tips with you today. You're not gonna wanna miss this. Please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And it all starts with tip number one, hydration, okay? you got to get in the habit of watering your body. Why is this so important? I mean, everybody knows you need to drink water, right? You don't drink water for a couple of days, you'll die. You can go months, weeks, months sometimes without eating food. But, you know, water is the solvent that makes everything possible within the human body. From the standpoint of weight loss, it does fill you up, right? It also helps you differentiate between being hungry and being thirsty. A lot of times dehydration makes you hungry when you're not really hungry. We don't really know uh, the difference a lot of times. So, and it's important, especially you live in drier climates, you're doing a lot of activity, but you you have to understand this. Uh, A dehydrated organism, if if you're dehydrated, the last thing your body's gonna wanna worry about is burning fat, all right? Because you're dehydrated, all your processes are now running below optimal levels. You have to hydrate your body. It's a simple thing. You've heard it for every year, every new year you've heard this tip, but it does start there because again, it's one of the fastest ways to stop having so many extra calories coming in. This is zero calorie. Okay. It is God's gift. We literally, we're the only planet as far as we know with life, it's all because of water. And uh, I think a lot of times we take it for granted and you know, look, I understand some people don't like to drink water. That's that's actually a sign that if you know water is so blase, that's a sign that you know there, there's something we need to work on here. All right. And you have to have an honest conversation with yourself. If you're not gonna get serious about hydration, you know, losing weight, getting fit, it's just not gonna don't even bother. All right. Because this is an easy thing to do. This is the low-hanging fruit that can immediately impact your health in a positive way. You want to drink water. I, I start every day with one or two cups of water out the gate. And then I drink it between meals and every 15 minutes of activity. I'm I'm just drinking water throughout the day. It clears out your system. A lot of you just went through this holiday situation, right? All those eats and treats, a lot of processed, you know, hard to digest foods, and you need that water to clean out your system. So it's going to help, obviously, the quote unquote, I hate that word, but detoxification process coming off the holidays. It's going to help prevent excessive eating, knowing the difference between being hungry and thirsty. And, you know, one of my biggest tips too, just if you don't like the taste, sprinkle a little salt in that it helps you actually absorb it better. So you're not just running it through your body, but play with some citrus cuts or, or, or fruit like cucumber, orange, lemon, lime. These are things you can put into the water and make them taste better. And also don't be afraid to use seltzer water or club soda. Again, zero calories. It's water with bubbles. It can actually help with digestion which is great, um, like around meals and stuff like that. You got to deal with a little bit of burps. Uh, I love Topo Chico, by the way. It's my favorite. I also like Propel. Uh, it's a great, you know, flavor-enhanced beverage as well if you need to kind of help 
uh, find ways to get in it if initially water is just, uh, if you're struggling with getting enough water in. But I'm telling you right now, this makes such a difference. It's going to clean you out from the inside out. It's going to help your skin, your energy. And again, one of the biggest reasons people hit a wall during their workouts, they think, oh, I didn't have enough pre-workout or I didn't have enough food. No, no, dehydration. Dehydration is the most uh, critical marker when it comes to exercise performance. If you are dehydrated, you will hit a wall. You won't be able to work as hard or for as long. It also will make your joints very dry. And that leads to pain, stiffness, injuries, and stuff like that as well. So just commit to it. Drink water immediately upon waking. Make that, you get out of bed right away, at least a cup or two of, of cold water. That actually can help metabolism a bit or just regular room temperature water, but get it in and then be drinking it before and between meals. Again, the before part is important as well, right? Because the water will compete for space in the stomach with food. If you're prone to overeating or binge eating, always kind of earning your meals with, with a nice drink of water will help tremendously. Hydrate. Number two, stress management. Okay. My whole thing, right? I was an emotional, I still am. I always will be. I've just found tremendous ways and, you know, years of trial and error, fine tuning, uh, you know, making the mistakes myself, which by the way, like you're going to have to do that too. You can't expect someone like I'm doing the best kind of share everything I know about this with you in, in, in an hour, years of experience I'm sharing with you in an hour. This, you will not find a level of information like this put into an hour. I don't think anywhere else. That's my goal today to empower you to find a way to actually make true and lasting change this year. Because honestly, I've been a fitness pro for 20 plus years. It's very depressing every year to see people start and stop every new year. But every year I get a little less depressed about it because I know it's out of my control. Because you got to do the work. People over the years have done my programs or followed stuff I've suggested. You've changed my life. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. But I have absolutely nothing to do with your failure or your success. It's out of my hands. I can share what I know. I can give you blueprints. You have to do the work. It is your success and your failure, no one else's. Now you might be like, oh, no, this, that should empower you. This is your journey, your process. So it's not gonna be perfect. You're gonna make mistakes along the way. But the number one thing I'll tell you right now, uh, in terms of stress, stress, it kills your dick, okay? It causes you to gain a lot of belly fat, central fat, the most dangerous fat. The fat that is leading to metabolic syndrome, diabetes, a host of other health-related conditions. Uh, you know, it's it just, it does everything, uh, like a little bit of stress is okay. In fact, you know, cortisol is not something you want to totally be able to avoid, the stress hormone. But when you have too much cortisol going, the combination of a high-stress job, high stress with relationships or family, or you're overworked, or you're undernourished, or you're over-exercising, or all of that, what ends up happening is we need to cope with that stress. If you don't know how to cope uh, in a positive way, what we end up doing is we end up drinking, doing drugs, or overeating, or all of those together. Uh, so we have to understand that when you're trying to lose weight, and we see this every new year, right? People, they're, they're just, it's like January, like New Year's Eve, most people are so disgusted with themselves. And that's actually like, that's the psychology of this, which is so dangerous. Like it's, they almost like hate themselves. It's a shame. It's a humiliation. I've been there. I once gained 35 pounds in five days. I got ready for, uh, this was like my early twenties too. I, uh, I was a football lineman. And after I finished football in college, I finally could like get shredded and get abs. And I'm like, you know, I'm going to go try to do a bodybuilding competition. 16 weeks of nothing but protein, uh, like meat and green vegetables. And uh, I got in the best shape of my life, but I, I was so deprived for so long. And then once the show was done, I just started eating like a fucking animal. And I shit you not, five days later, I was 35 pounds heavier and I was in worse shape before I started. I, and by the way, my whole life, I lived, I grew up in a, a dysfunctional, broken home. So food, it was just, I never knew what was going to fucking happen in that house. So food for me was a coping mechanism. A lot of the stuff that, you know, Look, we're all just big ass kids, aren't we? Trying to figure things out. We have to understand that. And I'm still working on finding ways, like when I, when I get stressed or even excited, I don't want food to be the first thing I think about to celebrate or cope. Uh, this is the process that I'm talking about with you. So, um, you know, one thing I'll share quickly because I want to get into over exercising and, and, uh, and starvation diets is again, if you create too much stress, 
you're going to get too hungry, all right? And it's going to be very difficult to lose weight. So you have to find the right balance of stress um, to get a change and create a stimulus to get a result, but too much, and it will absolutely make you burn out and then sometimes not only gain all the way back, but gain even more, especially as you get older. The body hates these swings of going up and down. So we, we want to avoid that. And the first thing I'll say in terms of, well, how do, if everybody talks about managing stress, well, how do you do it? I'm going to share do the most simple, effective way that I know how. And it's, it's the box breath, okay? Now, the box breath is used by Navy SEALs in, in you know, extreme situations where they need calm and focus, all right? You know, these SEAL teams, they're going out there on a secret covert mission. If it works for these guys and gals in the most stressful situations to come down and find calm and focus, it's going to work for us. All right, busy people just trying to make a living here and, you know, not in wartime situations. And, and this is, you know, in essence of what it is, it's a, it's a four second sequence where all four phases of the breathing are equivalent. A four second inhale, a four second breath hold, a four second exhale, and then a four second breath hold. And you repeat that, that cycle for time. I actually like to go five seconds personally because I like an, that nice round 20 second number. And, you know, anytime I get super stressed or I need to kind of, you know, just find some perspective, ground myself a little bit, uh, you know, take any emotion out of decisions, I do about three to six of these breaths. I did actually three to six breaths of these before I started the podcast because I, I really wanted to come in focused and energized to give you everything I have in this hour together. So let's do it right now. Just let's do a simple five second box breath cycle. I'm going to do it with you. So I'm not going to be talking, but again, it's a five second inhale, a five second breath hold, a five second exhale, a five second breath hold. We'll do one rep together. Listen to my breathing, close your eyes and just try to find your breath and pull that air as low into your belly as possible. Here we go. So it takes 20 seconds. And if you did what I just did, what you noticed immediately was an instant relaxation happening in the body. Why? Well, all day long, most of us are in a sympathetic fight or flight state. We're, we're turned up, our heart rate's up, we're taking stimulants, we're out of our fucking minds. This is a tough life, okay? I know we have a lot of technology, a lot of comforts, but uh, we why are we so unhappy? Why are we so depressed? Well, because a lot of us are working too hard and or we've lost perspective on what it means to live a quality life. That's beyond this podcast. But we need mechanisms to cope with that stress and flip the switch to go from sympathetic fight or flight to parasympathetic, which is rest, digest, recover. Uh, and that, that's essentially what this type of deep diaphragmatic belly breathing does. It makes you flip the switch. It brings your heart rate down. All right. Literally inside of your body, it's changing your mental state. All right. And this is what you need. Uh, I think it's the most important coping mechanism that I've ever developed. I just, my wife just turned 40 years old and we live in Palm Springs, California. And I'm like, I'm, I'm definitely afraid of heights. Okay. But I knew that she would really love to go on the Palm Springs aerial tramway. It's, it's pretty amazing. It took 30 years to build this. It's in the mountains of uh, Coachella Valley here. And you basically go like 8,000 feet up from the base in a tramway to the mountain. Like you go from hot desert to cold, like winter mountain like vibes. Uh, but you are hanging in this thing for like 10 to 15 minutes. And uh, I was kind of finding the way up on the way down. I was about to have a panic attack because I, again, I'm afraid of heights, but I'm like, I'm not going to ruin my wife's birthday. I'm going to figure out how to do this. But I already knew how to do it. I just went to my box breath. I closed my eyes. I did the box breath, and instead of losing my mind and ruining her birthday, I got myself the calm and focus I was looking for. So I'm just trying to like stress it upon you. It's a simple breathing technique, and by the way, you can make it easier by going a second down, right? It could be only three seconds each phase, or you can also progress it to going from four to five to six seconds. I've taken it as high as 10 seconds. Each phase really challenges your lungs and your diaphragm and your breath control, um, So, which will make you exercise harder and longer. You have better speaking ability or vocal ability if you sing or uh, present, but it's really important. And then the other piece of the stress management 
over exercising, right? You come from doing zero exercise to going one to two hours uh, every new year. This I see this all the time. And I'll actually, I'll talk to people, people in my neighborhood, I'm walking around here. They know I'm always out there doing my walks, which, which we'll talk about. That's number three. Uh, but you know, they, they kind of almost like a badge of honor. They come to me and it's like, yeah, I've been doing, I just did two hours at the gym. Well, I don't do two hours at the gym because I know that's not sustainable for me at 41 as a, uh, owning multiple businesses and just the workload I have. I also know, uh, it's not necessary because I, I'm not going to, I'm never going to stop. I've never stopped. I did my first workout when I was 14 years old. I've not missed a week of training since I'm all about the consistency and discipline of what it's all about. So, you know, that, that that's that's an important thing to note here too. And beyond the fact you're gonna get so sore and you're not gonna wanna work out. You're gonna wanna just like do nothing or you're gonna wanna eat or feel depressed. So I, I try to like, I'm really trying to emphasize this to you. If you're doing nothing, even five to 10 minutes is probably enough to get started. And I, I on my YouTube channel here, I share a bunch of equipment-free bodyweight workouts that are 20 minutes or less uh, and then, most of the stuff I use besides that, we're talking a pair of dumbbells, a resistance band, a medicine ball. And then my advanced exercisers, you know, we have a pull-up and dip bar, but that's it. What you see right now, this is my film studio. This is also where I work out. It's my house. I'm right here. Everything I have, I need. My training program is like a championship defense in the sense that it goes great on the road. I can travel. I'm never worried about what to do or how can I get my workouts in because it's it's mostly body weight based. And, and that makes it sustainable for me too. I don't have to worry about going anywhere. Um, it's all right here. So I've taken those opportunity costs and I made it as simple as possible for me to always find a way to do some movement. But over-exercising, again, especially not just over-exercising in terms of like doing marathon workouts, but I almost like and this might be like oh, this guy's a, this guy's a, a hack, right? Because what I'm going to tell you is, especially early on, avoid hard forms of exercise or high intensity exercise. And everybody says, well, it's the fastest way to lose weight because it stimulates more muscle and it improves your metabolism and gives you more shape and look and sculpting. Yes, but it makes you hungry as fuck. And if you are still working on your eating habits. Uh, one of the worst things you can do is like start doing a bunch of exercise that's really high intensity and then eat whatever you want, thinking that you can offset that because you can't. You cannot out exercise a bad diet or taking in too many calories. So, and by the way, most of us really need more of a mobility focus because so many people are in pain. How many people are how many people do you know take pain pills? We have a pain epidemic. And getting out of pain through just foundational mobility work, especially for the ankles, the hips, the shoulders. I have a great video here on YouTube called the top 10 mobility exercise for beginners at home. Check it out. These are, the, these are my favorite drills to kind of start getting you out of pain so that like, by the way, if you're healthy and you're not in pain, you want to move. Human body is designed to move. It's when you hurt and you get overweight and deconditioned and that negative feedback loop that happens uh, when you get stuck in that, it's like a black hole you can't get out of. So um, really like, and I'll talk about this today, I, I have a three-point system with how I approach my working out. Uh, I get a point for doing my daily mobility. I get a point for doing my daily walk. And then I get a point if I do at least 20 minutes of quote unquote training. But it's not an all or nothing thing. Even on the days I don't train, I've already gotten two points because I, I never miss my mobility and my walk. And then on the days I can get all three, great but I'm always moving in the right direction versus I commit to a two hour workout and it's all or nothing. Either I did it all and I feel like I'm a hero or I did nothing and I'm a fucking loser. And that's the type of mentality that we have to get out of. Again, it's not sustainable, it's questionable. And the same thing with the diet piece. If you starve yourself, you make your stress hormone goes, go, they just go crazy. You also get really low energy, you don't wanna move. And um, you know that's not sustainable. That's gonna affect your mood you're going to become a dick to your the people you love the most. Because what ends up happening, by the way, when you starve yourself, yeah, things happen fast and you see immediate changes. And that's absolutely gratifying. I get that. But we end up putting on uh, faces or masks at work, right? And give people we don't even really know or care about, frankly, uh, the best of ourselves. And then we come home, and we take it out on the people we love. Because you can only hold it for so long when we're so deprived and low energy. So that's unacceptable, right? It really is. I mean, not that you want to treat your coworkers like shit, but you don't want this to negatively impact your relationships or turn people off within your home. Your, your home, 
your family, that, that's everything. Everything else out, is outside of the inner circle. Those are just details. It's not, nothing's more important than, than the way you interact with the people you care about the most. So if you overexercise and you starve yourself, I guarantee you, no one's going to like you because you're going to become a ravenous survival animal. It's like an old, tired, hungry bear. All right. Not someone you want to be around. And by the way, not sustainable. You're, you're not going to reach your goals. You will quit. We've all been there and we made these mistakes. So don't do that this new year. Okay. So commit to the box breath, simple protocol to immediately help manage stress when it hits you hard. All right. And, and use that instead of going to food, drink, uh, or other illicit substances or other bad decisions, right? Uh, you want to make some good decisions. And then don't overexercise or do too much hard exercise. Do the easier stuff first. Get out of pain, enjoy movement, and then add in the harder stuff. Once you get really a better control of your diet and you know you can do this for beyond just 30 days, okay? And, and don't starve yourself, okay? There's, I'm going to talk about coming up here plenty of ways for you to lose weight, more so burn fat, uh, without having to overly restrict your calories too much, okay? Number three, the daily walk. And really what it should be called is meditative movement. Now, meditation, you hear that a lot of people, myself included in my younger days, yeah, you kind of scoff. It's like, fuck that shit. Because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm American, so, uh, you know, we, we tend to, like, you know, find worth in how hard we do things or how impossible uh, or how challenging things are versus, like, oh, let's just live a good quality life. It doesn't have to be as hard. It doesn't have to be this hard all the time, right? And we don't have as much of a balance, I guess, the yin and yang to things, right? We work so hard and we don't have uh, the resting recovery component to offset that. So we suffer and uh, we suffer also here. Be beyond, like, what is a meditation? Honestly, a meditation is anything that has, uh, in its essence, a breath focus. Um, you know, so a box breath is a meditation. Now, I, I said do this meditation. You might not be as receptive to it, but now that you know maybe SEALs do it, oh, yeah, let's fucking do this. All right? So there, there is like, you know, words matter terminology can help. But a daily walk is, um, man, it's just like it's the most sustainable thing, right? Like here's the reality. People that live a long time but find themselves in a wheelchair or with joint replacements or uh, other disabilities, right? Uh, they, they, they spend the last years of their life not really enjoying it because we were designed to walk around and enjoy everything that's around us. So if you lose that mobility later in life, I mean, it's not going to be fun. We've all seen it with grandparents or people that uh, we know that have gotten older and, and it's, not, it's not great, right? And a lot of times right now, we're, we're focusing so much in the short term how to lose weight, gain muscle, get as big as possible, get as lean as possible. And it's coming at the expense of our joints. Some people are actually in the pursuit of getting fit are wearing their joints down faster than they would otherwise, um, exchanging, I guess, the best look they can in their youth for uh, being in pain and immobile later in life. To me, that's unacceptable. I'm someone who, by the age of 21, had two knee surgeries on each leg. I, I had arthritis, already had arthritis. I was told by my doctor that I have the knees of an 85-year-old. And the last two decades, I've, I've rebuilt my knees and my body from the ground up from years prior in my younger days, uh, trying to lift too heavy, impress my friends, and do everything out of ego versus sustainability and longevity. Again, these are mistakes we have to make sometimes, right? All the mistakes I made, all the weaknesses in my youth have become strengths later in life, not just in terms of me overcoming them, but sharing them with good people like you so you can avoid them. And you know, that's, I'm sure you have that same thing in your life. But a daily walk, it's, it's something we all can, can strive for. Maybe we can't all be super strong at 80, but we can all set a goal of being able to do a walk. I see people in my neighborhood, 80 plus, that, that can still walk. And they enjoy it. They get out of the sun. They get the fresh air. They see things that are beyond their screens. They're actually out living a real life. I do think it's important to do it outside. Maybe you're in cold winter climates. I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I know what the cold is all about, especially those harsh winters. But I also do encourage you to challenge yourself to get outside and do these walks outside. It really makes a difference in your, your mental health. And even on you know winter times where you're not getting as much direct sun, that, that any sun you can get, that vitamin D will help you lose 
fat faster, and it's very important for overall health. So maybe consider also supplementing some vitamin D if you do live in northern climates, as well as a, kind of a bonus tip. But the mental health, the clarity, and the creativity, on my walks, I come up with these types of podcast ideas where I'll brainstorm what I want to share with you or new workouts I'm going to create or you know, strategies in which I can use to help, um, you know, evolve and build my business. Or I just dream. I think about things that I want to do 5, 10, 15 years from now. Dreaming is what keeps us young, by the way. That's a big part of, of, of anti-aging. It's, it's dreaming. It, it's being creative. And it's getting out there and moving and circulating blood. And, you, and by the way, in terms of what it can do for your overall health, blood sugar management, um, Walking can absolutely help you lose weight, but walking's biggest role is once you've lost weight or got into your ideal body weight, a daily walk really helps you maintain. And that's where everyone you know has lost weight. You've lost weight, I've lost weight. Everyone you know has lost some weight at some point. They've also gained it back. But very few people statistically maintain it because they end up doing and choosing you know, whatever it is, uh, the hardest possible workout program, the longest workouts, um, they think they, they kind of overlook walking because I actually look forward to walking. Like you want to add in as much physicality that you can, that you enjoy. Now you got to do some things you don't. All right. Now you're going to have to do some lunges, some push-ups. You're going to have to hang from a bar. You know, uh, these things are, are, but by the way, you end up enjoying those too, as long as you're not in pain, but uh, not everything has to be so hard because what ends up happening is you won't stick with it. But the walk, once you get into the habit of it, it really changes everything. And by the way, get a dog. The, the ultimate walking buddy, my, my, we have a boxer, and I've had five boxers, the best dog in my opinion. Um, you know, they're like humans. In my, they really are like the most human breed. But she will, not, she will not get off my ass unless she gets a daily walk. Now, I want to walk. But there, there are times where I'm just working too hard, just like with a kid, right? And your kid wants to play and your dog wants to play. It just, okay, you know what? I can, I can, I got enough done today. What's important? This life can be taken from you any moment. That's a fact. I don't mean to be over dramatic, but actually I've seen it happen in my own life. Many of you have known someone that just dropped dead or just died suddenly. And it's like, so I, I wasted all this time doing too much work or doing, getting caught in the, the traps that took me away from really doing what I enjoyed in life or spending time with people I loved and cared about the most. It just keeps you present, all right? It helps you maintain that habit. And you know what? I'm all about support and accountability. Part of what's allowed me to get better and better each year is I'm always filming myself, so I'm constantly seeing my exercise form and technique, which I share with you. So if it's not good enough, I want to improve it because I have to share the best I can with you. I'm also, you know, especially when I do the shirtless stuff, there's accountability there for me. Uh, where, you know, okay, I, I got to really tighten up the diet and just, you know, it's always more diet for me. I, I'm always going to be exercising, but food has always been my pitfall. I tend to eat too much on the weekends. Um, Cause again, you know, I, I'm, I'm just from, I'm a, I'm a former fat kid from the Midwest who loves to fucking eat. I'm a cheesehead from Wisconsin. I'll always be that, but I've gotten better each year with it as I, I'll share with you as well. But it's a meditative movement, by the way, you can turn your walk into a breathing workout and that will actually give you calm and focus. Uh, here's how you would start the walk and basic four, four rhythmic breathing. I apply this to a lot of cardiovascular exercise. And by the way, if you don't approach exercise with like, what's the breathing strategy for this movement, it's ass backwards. That's why I used to do it too. I, I didn't. I'm like, no, actually you should have a breathing strategy for every exercise, walking included. So what you would do is You'll do an inhale for four steps and an exhale for four steps. That's a 4-4 four, four rhythmic breathing tempo. You can ride that breath, that breath train for 15, 30, 60 minutes, and um, it gives you calm and focus. It's a built-in breathing workout to, to your daily walks. You have to do an additional breathing workout outside of it. I also take my box breath technique. I apply it to the walk. I'll do four steps uh, inhale, four steps breath hold, four steps exhale, four steps, breath hold. And I'll just, again, I'll ride that breath train. And it actually challenges your breathing muscles like you were running, but you're walking, which means it's lower impact. I don't even wear a weight vest. Typically when I walk, a little more strength and, and posture focus. But it just it's a way to give your, your breathing muscles the challenge of higher intensity cardio or running 
during your walk, which is just transformative. These are the smarts. Again, as you get older, it's I, I talk about like it's like the Michael Jordan, uh, the second three peat, where it was, you know, it wasn't all about the the dunking from the free throw line. It was all about that, that easy uh fadeaway. Didn't take a lot of energy uh or didn't really stress me out to do, but it was it's still two points. It's still two points. It's a more sustainable two points, especially as you get older, especially if you're busy. So um the daily walk to me, it's a daily meditation. It's, it's whether you're listening to music or listening to the sounds in nature or a podcast like this, you can take, you can educate yourself on a walk and learn. And that, that, that inspires, that adds creativity. So just make it a part of, of your, your, your process here. And here's, by the way, here's how you go from someone who doesn't walk at all to someone who walks every day for an hour in just six short weeks right now, okay, or after this podcast. Or just like pause it, take this pocket with and walk. Set the countdown clock for five minutes, leave the house. The moment it comes off, come back. You walk as far as you can from the house, but that five minutes is up, you come back. So it's a 10 minute total walk both ways. But also mentally, it's only five minutes in the beginning. That's important here. This, you know, it's like, this is how people do amazing things. They don't think about how many total, they find ways to break it up into manageable segments. Uh, and then week two, it's a 10 minute countdown clock. Go as far away from the house as you can come back the moment that timer goes off. Week three, it's 15 minutes. Week four, it's 20. Week five, it's 25. Week six, it's 30. And now we sustainably built you up. We build the frog, we slow cook the gains, and you're someone who walks every day for an hour. That is something you can sustain for the rest of your life. And that's why it's so important for longevity and body weight maintenance. And again, we'll give you a little, especially if you're doing additional full body training outside of it, but some resistance work, uh, maybe you know peppering in some some moderate amounts of high intensity intervals or cardio. Um, it's going to help. Like any additional exercise or movement outside of that style of exercise has almost an exponential fat burning effect. So it also helps with recovery because your aerobic system drives your overall recovery system. So uh, it's critical. Number four, and and this is really like it's an acronym that I created called EHO. Every hour on the hour, I move for at least a minute to break up prolonged sitting. It's typically mobility focused, but sometimes I do some strength work. Um, I have a pull-up bar on my, um, I have multiple pull-up bars. Again, like big parts of habits are, if it's important, you should be able to see it and always be reminded of it. I've got a pull-up bar right next to our bathroom. I have one here by my office. Anytime I walk by it, I get up on it. And a lot of times it's self-assisted self -assisted with my feet on the floor. I'm not always doing hard stuff, but I'm always doing, I'm putting the time on that bar. And what it's done in terms of improving my shoulder mobility, decompressing my spine, uh, building my upper body and my overall pulling strength. I mean, it's transformative. That's one thing I can challenge you to do this new year. Get a $50 pull-up bar on Amazon. Put it up. Every time you go buy it, just get on it. And maybe it's 10 seconds. By the way, especially with grip strength stuff, you know, in the morning when I get up on there, sometimes I can only go on for 10 seconds. Sometimes in the afternoon, even I can go for three plus minutes. But I'm always adding time, putting my time in on the bar. I'm getting the frequency in, and it makes such a difference um, in terms of, um, it, well, here's what it does. If I do a, a, a hang for a minute or I just a set, hang, uh, a set of hangs every hour on average during a 10-hour workday, right? It means that by the end of that day, even if I don't do any training that day, I've done 10 minutes of something that helps me build muscle, improve mobility. I'm burning some fat as well because it's a it's a pretty uh, it's a big compound multi-joint exercise. Um, and I'm gonna it's it's high frequency and I'm also managing fatigue. I'm not trying to get so tired. Um, and by the way, this is I I, I EHO is kind of like if you have a dog, you they're just stretching throughout the day. They, they get them, they do a little downward dog. By the way, it could be a downward dog. It could be a deep squat. Um, and, and you start by committing to that because sitting for long periods of time have, have what do they do? All right, we get all flexed and rounded. Now our posture's off, our hips get tight, and our shoulders are back and our knees start to hurt. All right? And then because we're spending all this time here, we've got to spend all this time warming up or we'll just skip it and we get and then we're getting more prone to getting injured. But it takes so long for us to get loose and warm to do exercise because all day long we're just Bleh. We're just Bleh. No, no, no. When you're, when you're moving for a minute every hour on the hour, you are getting yourself in a situation where the body is more supple, it's more open, 
and uh, you don't need as much of a warm up to get started into your workout because you're not generating as much stiffness and tightness from sitting on your ass or commuting, whether it's commutes or just being at your desk. So th this is, by the way, people are addicted to uh, caffeine and energy pills and substances, right? Um, this is a non-stimulant energy booster. Right now, if I got up, and by the way, this could be as simple as jumping jacks or a seal jack, by the way, right? We're sitting. How can I quickly in a minute add some energy and then open up some tight areas of the body, like the chest? The chest tightens up when you're sitting at the desk. So you take a seal jack, and I'm just in and out. You will exhale out, inhale back. Here's the feet. You know, jumping jacks, right? Just a minute of that. That's going to energize you. That's going to give you a little metabolic boost. So you can kind of keep, just like that, I got fired up. Just do some jumping jacks right now while I'm talking during this section. You, you feel, again, I'm getting cardio. I'm getting metabolism. I'm getting the breath workout. Exhale out, inhale back in, opening up my chest muscles. And then also as you pull out, use your upper back to squeeze those shoulder blades together. And again, I'm not saying that's, gonna, that's the biggest muscle builder out there, but this is a strategy you can use at your work desk to get out of, get off, get up off your ass move so you're not so tight and you have more energy during your day this has transformed by the way uh, in terms of strength training one of my buddies i did a podcast with him recently uh, jason c brown a former marine and he went into the marines could only do like a couple pull-ups he left being able to do 24 which by the way anyone who can do like 20 plus pull-ups this is like elite world-class level full range dead hang what did he do in the Marines, he told me, in order to use the bathroom, they put a pull-up bar to, in the entrance to the bathroom. So you had to do a set on the bar to go into the bathroom and do another set to leave. And he never went to failure. He would either do like one, three, or five reps, or he would just hang on the bar. And that, that just builds your overall pulling capacity, grip strength, scapular, shoulder, uh, stamina, endurance, and posture, and then doing 24 after he left. So it doesn't have to be maximal effort. Just you got to put in the time and the high frequency nature of it, avoiding failure and always kind of just doing a, a number of reps or an, a length of time that is manageable for you that you just compound over the course of the day, every day of the week for weeks on weeks on weeks. That's what creates change. Number five, we have uh, kind of the first diet besides hydration, right? Modified fasting plus a protein and produce foundation that that is in one two three four about six words that sums up my personal approach to diet now i hate talking about diet because you're going to end up eating however the fuck you want to eat all right and, and by the way you need to try a bunch of different diets oftentimes to figure out what's what works for you we're all different we all have different chemistries different preferences different cultural and genetic um roots that dictate what we like to eat what we don't like to eat what what our body can handle and vice versa but I will tell you this, um, and, and by modified fasting too, I, I don't worry about how, not, like, oh, the 16-8 the, the split or the, the, the window like that. Again, I, I don't like that because it ends up happening. People get too um, anal, right, too obsessive, compulsive about the eating, and that's not good. Uh, you know, almost everyone um, that goes down that, that route, uh, speaking from someone who, who had an eating disorder, binge eating, and could just – uh, gain incredible amounts of weight in a short period of time and have always just pushed myself way past the state of fullness for whatever reason that was, right? Emotional stress, all that, but coping mechanisms, et cetera. But, um, you know, the, these, uh, this is really like, and it's, I still do it today. I've been doing it for, for over a decade. It's just, this is what I do. So let's start with, you know, the modified fasting component. What does my typical day of eating look like? Um, Things cycle throughout the year, but ultimately the way it looks right now, the way it typically looks, I wake up in the morning, I have a couple cups of water, and I, I start brewing my coffee. I take my coffee black, and I'll have uh, my AG1 Athletic Greens, which is a complete greens powder and multivitamin uh, to cover my micronutrition. You got your macros, your proteins, your fats, your carbs, your micros are all the vitamins and minerals, the small stuff that fills in the gaps to round out uh, a solid nutritional plan. Very important too, because the foods we have today, they don't have the same amount of nutrients that they used to because of, you know, the food supply is fucked. What can I say? 
it, all we can do is con you know control what we can and we try to make the best choices but um that that's really the only supplement i, I take every day um and then i uh uh, sometimes I also have just uh, one scoop of protein powder with water. And I like a little whey casein blend so I get that instant hit of protein. And also the casein is a slower absorbing protein. But I, sometimes I don't even have the protein powder. I just go the water, the coffee, the greens. Midday, I have a shake. Um, and it can be a shake or a smoothie, right? Shake means that it has some sort of milk base. Smoothie means it's typically just like a, a juice or a water base. It's up to you. Again, these are the details you can work on over time and fine tune through trial and error, but don't sweat the details. Just commit to something simple and sustainable. I like a midday shake because it's something I can, I can make in five minutes at home that I can add more to if I want to gain more muscle or take things away to lose more fat. So it, it's something that's it's easily adjustable. It's also, it, I can say light and tight during the workday. If I have a, a big solid meal midday, I don't get anything productive done the rest of the day. I get tired. I get lethargic. Uh, it just doesn't work for me. So uh, that's why I like to have that easy digestible midday shake. And it can be as simple as um, your preferred protein powder, animal or plant, or you know, something like liquid egg whites, and uh, you add some fruit to it, some ice, some water. If you go the more milk route, it could be a cup of, of chocolate milk. I like the Fairlife brand because it has uh, more protein, less sugar. Or it could be, uh, if you have dairy issues, it could be oat milk, it could be almond milk, or it could just be fucking water. Just be water. You know, what's wrong with a little bit of water? Cold water with fruit and protein powder. And then what I also like to do is throw in some, uh, like three tablespoons of chia seeds to get my essential fats. And uh, it's like 13 grams of fiber too, which is very important for cleaning yourself out, digestive health, and also keeping you full so you don't eat too much. But um, that's my midday shake, and, and I keep it pretty simple and standard on a daily basis. Then at night, um, it, it's it's a large protein and produce meal, and it's simplest form. It could be just you know for me, uh, meats and vegetables or eggs and vegetables. Um, if you're uh, vegan or vegetarian, it's going to be some mix of you know rice, beans, and other plant uh, protein sources um, that give you complete blend of essential amino acids. Uh, so there's, there's lots of ways to make it work, but um, that that foundation of, of you know, protein and produce, produce, fruits and vegetables, and then protein, whatever complete source of protein works for your diet, your, your, your ethics or, or whatever it is that, that, that you want to commit to. And, um, the, it's modified fasting because, you know, anytime you take something in that isn't water, you're breaking the fast technically, but you're still getting tons of benefits by having, because what, what I approach it as protein is not negotiable. You need, there's essential amino acids your body needs. And by taking enough protein on a regular basis, you, you preserve your muscle mass and or increase it with training, which increases your resting metabolic rate, the calorie you burn, regardless of whether you move or not. That's important for long-term, not only weight loss, but weight loss maintenance, all right? So beyond that, um, this is what happened in your 41, sometimes you lose train of thought, but there was a key point there. Let, let, let me, oh yeah, yes, there you go. So that's essential. All right. But the, the things I want to play with is the fuel, right? Fat and carbohydrate is more of a fuel source. What I want to try to do is find the smallest amount of both that I need to take in to be uh, well fed and well nourished, but that I can also create um, a situation where I'm going to be eating up that sugar in the muscles and eating up some body fat. And that, that's the combination that you want. So you always, the protein is non-negotiable. You got to make sure you get the protein in, but then you want to find a way to bring your fat and carbohydrate down to a low enough level that you can create the energy deficit that allows you to metabolize fat. And, uh, you know, that, that's the sweet spot you got to play with. Um, what's essential? You need essential proteins, amino acids. There's also essential fats, meaning you, you only can get them through diet. Um, there are no essential carbohydrates. It doesn't exist. Now, I'm not saying you go low carb or zero carb. Um, you might want to try it, but no, no one ever, there's no one who's ever been on zero carb their whole life. They can do it for maybe three months, six months. I know people that have done it for a year, but after that, they tend to completely fall off the wagon. So it's not about eliminating a food group, but again, protein is non-negotiable. And then we have to just focus on the essential fats. And when I'm, by making your carbs focused on produce instead of, you know, starches and sugars, what you're doing is you're saying, okay, I'm going to give my body maximum nutrients with minimal calories. 
You understand? Maximal nutrients, minimal calories. So if 80% of the carbohydrates you eat are either fruits or vegetables, and then maybe after exercise, um, you, you have a, a serving or two of your favorite starch, like a, a, an Ezekiel bread is one of my favorite, like sprouted grain breads, which are higher fiber and protein, lower carbohydrate, or it could be, uh, you know, beans, legumes, uh, you know, it could be a, a half to one cup of white rice, but that's, that's where you want to kind of focus on minimizing. Cause again, if we can take those carb stores down a little bit, empty that tank a little bit, you will burn more body fat in the process. But if we take those too low, you can't control your appetite. You'll get lethargic. And uh, sometimes you can get muscle loss. And it, it's also miserable. It's like you have to like, you got to create like fake foods to stick on diets like keto and those types of things. I don't call my diet anything. Uh, but th the foundation of it is, is a modified fast where I'm not really taking anything that isn't uh, water or protein or the greens powder to start the day um, until about midday. And I, I tend to backload my calories, meaning I, I most of the calories I, can, I consume are after my, my uh, evening workout. Um, that, that's what works best for me. You've got to play around with what works best for you. But um, I find that when I do it that way, I actually get more done at work. I'm, I'm maximally productive and focused. And then uh, what eating does for what is this period, it actually shifts you and winds you down, ramps you down. Rest, recover, digest. We cover that with a box for the parasympathetic state. So after your evening meal, you're going to automatically start ramping down anyway. And that's why I kind of like that process. Diet is tough. I could talk about this for three hours. I, you know, this is the fifth tip I had to get in. But um, the, the fasting component too, by the way, it, it gives you dietary discipline. Uh, my father is a Muslim from North Africa, Tunisia, to be specific. And um, I, I, I've done Ramadan. I, I fasted. I actually, I did. I fasted the month of Ramadan during two football seasons in college, and it developed for me a level of discipline with my diet. Like really knowing the difference between I could always eat, okay, but the difference between being hungry and wanting to eat are are seismic. And fasting helps you develop the discipline to do that. It also does shrink the stomach. It makes it so you don't. Uh, it's it's harder to eat too much at meals. Um, like I, I just, I can't, I, when, I, when I do the process that I have where it's a shake midday and then a, a protein and produce meal at night, um, there's only so much I can eat because of the fact that I have been in this modified fasting state. And it also, it's a way to just, I, I think that works naturally for us as humans to naturally uh, restrict our calories without having to count calories. Everything is portion focused. And a protein and produce meal can be as simple as a fist of protein, um, at least one or two servings of, of fruits and vegetables or a fist of fruits and vegetables. And if you want to add a starch into it, it could be a fist of starch and make it a clean natural source like uh, white or brown rice or again, sprouted grain breads or legumes or beans. Um, potatoes are my favorite, by the way, like a, a potato um, is, is it's a, it is a vegetable. It's a starchy vegetable, but to me, um, you can you can have one uh, you can have one potato every day and, and find a way to have great fat loss. In fact, I think it helps keep you full and it gives you more energy, so you can train harder to create more muscle and, and fat loss through exercise. So again, you got to play with some stuff here, but uh, I'll also add the final component here is uh, kind of the the four S's of meal prep: shakes slash smoothies, salads, soups, and, and skillets or bowls. These are really fast, simple ass meals you can make at home or take with you to work um, that, again, allow you to get a lot of nutrition in. They fill you up and, and the calories are on the lower side of things. I'll do a separate podcast on this at some point too. But again, like the foundation of what I do and by skillet, I mean like what can you quickly throw into a pan with some avocado oil or olive oil, even grass fed butter, depending on what type of oil you want to cook with. Coconut oil works too. What type of vegetables or, or, and protein can I throw in there and cook up really quick and eat that'll fill me up and give me a lot of nutrition? You know, that's a skillet or a bowl, right? Uh, that could be, you know, rice, beans, um, chicken or beef or eggs or a mixture of that or, you know, fish, whatever it is that, that floats your boat or, um, you know, again, other plant sources of protein. Again, I'm not as, uh, I'm not plant-based, so I'm not the best person to get advice on with that, but you do whatever you need to do to make it work to get in that protein. But, and then salads are great too, getting the food volume, all the, the you know, keeping you full and, and uh, again, shakes slash smoothies, salads, soups. I love bone broths because it gives a lot of collagen, which is good for your joints, your skin. 
and again, it fills you up. It, it's water. It's, it's a good way to get some extra water into your diet if you struggle to drink water. So number six, I'll be quicker on, on, on the, the final here because, uh, again, I, I, don't, I get a little bit long-winded, but uh, you want to sleep like a man, baby. You got to find a way to sleep as close to seven to eight hours a night as you can, and when you can't, fill in those gaps with your brief 15 to 30-minute eyes closed naps in, in a dark or quiet room or with some white noise or nature soundscapes to help you relax because, again, it's just dur during sleep we release – very important fat burning and anti-aging hormones. Uh, we don't get enough sleep. We don't release those. And it's basically like trying to go up a hill wearing roller skates. Why make it harder on yourself than it has to be? Now, some of us, we have crazy lives, okay? Um, and maybe you can't change that right away, but try to make it up on the weekend if you can. Try to make it up with naps when you can. And what's helped me tremendously, I used to do a lot of pre-workout in the afternoon to get ready for my workout or I have coffee too. And uh, just really could not get to bed or find that restful sleep I was looking for. So I don't have any coffee um, after 10 a.m. because, or even 9 a.m. sometimes, because I'm I'm in I'm in bed at nine and I'm asleep by 10. You want at least a 12-hour gap between the last time you took caffeine between when your your uh, your ideal bedtime is to ensure a restful sleep. If you're having if you're trying to go to bed at 10, you have caffeine after two. You're, it's it's still going to be in your system, and it's going to be tough to get to sleep, and that's going to it's going to mess up everything. So uh, that's important as well. And then you want to establish some form of pre bed routine an hour before falling asleep. You know, and, and typically what I like to do is uh, it could be a hot tub, it could be a hot shower. It just relax and takes a lot of tone out of uh, especially the shoulders, the hips, the back, um, which helps you also kind of get in a state of, of relaxation so you can fall asleep faster. It also, even though it's warming you up initially, it ends up as you exit hot, the hot water shower bath, it ends up bringing your body temperature down, which actually helps you shift into deep sleep. Uh, you want to bring that body temperature down. If, you're, if your temperature is too high, which is why working out too late in the day can make it tough to get to sleep uh, for many people because their metabolism is still too revved up, their heart rate's up, and, and they're, they're too, their core temperature is too high. So um, that that's a good strategy I use. Here, here's a quick tip too. I get nothing from this company, but I got my wife and I a pair of these uh, goggles from Therabody. Um, refurbished, they were like $100, $139 each. You put these on and it basically gives you an ocular and temple massage and it applies heat as well. And uh, I use it before bed. It's, I do 30 minutes before bed. I put this on. I guarantee it for me to fall asleep. Um, and I also use it for my power naps um, that I do uh, typically, you know, around 1 or 2 p.m. each day. Um, I, I'll do like a – I, previously, I would just close my eyes and lay down and listen to a soundscape. And even if I didn't fall asleep, my eyes were closed. I'm just – I'm relaxing. I'm just decompressing. But when I put these on, it just – it gets a lot of tension out of the, the face um, around the eyes from being in the screens and looking at screens, whether it's your phone or your computer all day. It's, it's helped tremendously. My wife never uses stuff like this, but she's addicted to it now. It's really helping us both, uh, both on naps and just getting uh, deeper, better sleep. Uh, number seven, we're getting there. 3-20-52 training, okay? And what does that mean? This is what I recommend to most people, the average busy parent professional, trying to find a way to make fitness a sustainable part of their life, full body fitness. Three full body workouts a week, and by the way, that could also be like if you wanted to do the three sessions as maybe one upper body, one lower body, one core, uh, that could work too. But typically full body workouts, especially when the goal is uh, fat loss, weight loss, full body training three times a week is kind of the gold standard of day of rest between sessions. Uh, and so it's three 20, 52, three full body workouts, 20 minutes each, and 52 weeks of the year. That to me is a, uh, that's a great challenge to take on. By the way, I have a bunch of these 20 minute uh, express workouts here on my YouTube channel. You can do, uh, they start, there's, there's ads on them. So if you want the ad free version of, of this and all of my workouts past and present and all my plans and programs, get a free seven day trial at the daily But you can get started for free with ads on YouTube. And these workouts get progressively harder. X one is the easiest X 60 is the hardest. And it goes everything in between. And again, body weight, dumbbells, bands, and metaballs. That's what we use here. You can get these done in 20 minutes. They're all follow-along base. Be sure to check them out. Um, 
that to me is like once you can do that for a year, uh, you've proven to yourself that this is something you can do forever. And, and that's what, uh, by the way, it takes about a year to do anything great anyway. But that to me is something that I would consider to be kind of the gold standard for uh, busy parent professional full body fitness. Now, after a year of that, proving that you can do it, at least 80 to 90% completion rate, then maybe you say, I'm going I'm to go more advanced. And my advanced members of the dailybeacher.com, they do 40 minute sessions where they do kind of a, a combination of a 20 minute fat loss circuit and a 20 minute strength muscle gain workout to do the straight muscle gain first and they stack it with a fat loss workout to kind of get the best of both worlds shred meets gain so to speak um but because of that extra volume and intensity they go three weeks on one week off uh on a monthly basis to, to prevent overtraining and prevent injury and then every quarter there's a nice two-week break spring break summer break fall break winter break to get away uh, reconnect with things outside of the gym and then also, you know, make it so that you, you, uh, always want more and, and you get excited to come back. It's just a great sustainability strategy. Uh, number eight, this is a quick one, but it's powerful. When I was my fattest, I was drinking like three to four glasses of milk, three to four glasses of juice and six plus sodas a day. That's a lot of empty, non-filling calories. When we talk about the low hanging fruit of weight loss, limiting, I'm not saying eliminate, but limit liquid calories. Try to take your coffee as black as you can take it. I'm not saying you don't put a little bit of cream or, or milk into it, but uh, definitely avoid dousing it with too much sugar and added fats. Uh, that's that's one way to get those calories down. Um, and these are they don't really. Yeah, it might help the flavor a little bit, obviously, but um, those liquid calories are not helping you lose weight. Okay, they aren't. Um, and 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 what I say too is limit yourself to a cup of, of your milk of choice and a cup of your juice of choice a day. You don't have to totally eliminate it, but you can't. your beverage of choice can't be a, uh, a regular Gatorade or beer. Obviously, alcohol is a whole other thing. I don't drink at all uh, because I have alcoholism in my family, but um, you know that, that, that's a separate conversation that will definitely slow weight loss, fat loss, and again, liquid calories beyond the fact that alcohol itself is, a, is perceived as a toxin within the body. So anytime you ingest it, uh, your body will not burn fat until it clears the alcohol, the toxin. That's how your body's worried about survival. It's not worried about aesthetics, okay? So uh, just so you know, but I'm not telling you, you got to make your own choices. But I will say liquid calories really slow the process. There's not much nutrition coming in. It's not going to fill you up. They are emptier calories, but just put some some reasonable limits, a cup of milk, a cup of juice, and and try to take your coffee as as black as you can take it, and you can wean off of it over time too. You don't have to go from like um, looking like you know uh, whatever to whatever like instantly. But uh, you know you're you're teasing your coffee if you have to. But a lot of you know use natural things like honey, all right, um, whenever you can. But just try to avoid those like frappuccino style drinks. They're not going to help you lose weight. Okay, in fact, they're probably going to throw off your energy levels and your blood sugar to make you hungrier because of those quick digestible, uh, you know, sometimes fake fats or just uh, those simple sugars are not good for um, the system. And then, you know, take advantage of sugar-free and zero-calorie beverages in moderation. Now, my biggest sin, and I'm going to try to work on it this year, I, I do drink too much uh, diet sodas. I uh, just, you know, but I don't drink regular soda. Um, so I guess it's, do I want to die of diabetes or cancer? I don't know. But uh, I, I joke, but all, all the research, by the way, shows that, you know, a couple uh, diet sodas, diet sodas or zero calorie uh, uh, beverage modifications, if you will, um, a day are not going to cause any health issues. And, and if anything, it might help you stay the course. So uh, I'm not perfect, um, but, you know, we all have our sins. Number nine, we're almost there, guys. Embrace nature's dessert. This one's this one is powerful, you know. Um, and, and maybe challenge yourself to find out what your ancestral fruit is. Uh, you know, so for example, if I talk about my, my father uh, from North Africa, um, dates. You know, and, and by the way, when you typically break a fast uh, during Ramadan, it, it, it's dates and milk because it's it's quick, easy energy that is easy on the stomach if you haven't been having anything in there in a while, so you don't get sick. Um, so you can get ready for a, a bigger meal in maybe 30, 60 minutes. But, um, you know, if you like, it's it, like, this is God's gift. This is, this is, these are the sweets. 
And by the way, when I was really, really fat, I got, when you eat a lot of refined, processed, sugary, junk carbs, you, you, your palate gets all fucked up. And you get to the point where you're where I was, where fruit didn't even taste sweet to me. Like this is like, it's just not sweet enough. That's a problem. That means that um, your whole system is fucked. I don't, I, I'm sorry to be blunt, but um, this is nature's dessert. And a simple thing you can do during the new year, and I guarantee you, this will, in, in, in a short as two to four weeks' time, if you have a nightly dessert of like cookies or cake or ice creams, um, and I'm not against those in moderation. We're going to talk about that as number 10 to final tip. I'm going to cover that. But um, the simple act of eating fruit instead of sweets for your nightly dessert, at just a cup or serving of fruit, it's about 100 calories, lots of, uh, and by the way, uh, it's a type of sugar, fructose or fruit sugar, that your, your body gets more full from versus simple uh, sugars like from corn syrup or just pure sugary foods. Um, it it will retrain and refine your palate. And uh, my favorite options are organic berries, cherries, and pineapple. I also like tart cherry concentrate that I can kind of drizzle uh, on uh, some of those too, which has a lot of antioxidants, helps with recovery. But um, a nice little bowl, and you can put a little whipped cream, maybe a little honey drizzle if you want. This is a nice little treat. Um, Again, now some people that go too hardcore, oh, but that's too much sugar uh, if I'm going keto or everything else like that. Whatever additional fat loss you squeeze out from cutting that 100 calories, which by the way, has a lot of nutrients, is going to go a long way to you staying the course. Because if you cut out fruit altogether, I've been there. Again, it's just like, man, it gets tough to want to stay the course. Um, we need, we need, We need a little bit of sugar. And that, that's part of the problem of like going uh, no fat or no carb is we get afraid of foods. There's nothing wrong with uh, no one's getting fat from fruits, okay? Now, you, you eat too much fruit, that could maybe slow fat loss, but let's focus more on uh, getting better foods in our diet um, and, and, uh, and filling ourselves up more so we choose shittier foods less. And uh, so fruit's a big part of that. And by the way, berries in particular are almost like a, a vegetable, because they're very low in sugar, very high in fiber, and they have the highest amount of antioxidants, which fight cancer. They help with muscle recovery. They help with all that stuff that we want to fight when we get older, okay? That's a simple fruit instead of sweets. And then maybe once a week, treat yourself to some simple vanilla ice cream. Just don't go with the cookies and cream and all the additives, all right? Final thing, flexible eating progression. This is what allows you to take a diet that might work for you. And by the way, this is a big part of it too. The diet that gets you the initial results that has to change your life or transform your body forever may not necessarily be the exact same diet you need ongoing or later in life, right? Because goals change. You get older, tastes change. And then sometimes, like, by the way, the benefit of getting leaner and more muscular is you can actually, this muscle is just a blood sugar sponge. The more muscle you have, the more carbohydrate you can take in uh, without fear of getting fat from it because especially you're active, uh, again, they, they're blood sugar sponges. So it's kind of like the, the fat keep getting fatter and the, and the fit keep getting fitter or the poor keep getting poorer, the rich getting richer. They're, they're, these are the spoils of a consistent exercise and diet routine that uh, as you get better and better with it, you actually can incorporate more flexibility. But here's the thing, especially if you just came off the holidays where you lost control of yourself, you got to be honest with yourself, man. You know, don't lie to yourself. Don't lie to me. Don't lie to yourself. Be honest with yourself. Um, you can't have it all. You know, uh, there there comes a time too where you know what I I do need to challenge myself and I got to shock my system. If, if other things you've done that haven't worked in a while, um, or you know you're in a situation where you know you're getting close to fifty percent body fat or more, um, small changes may not be what you need because what ends up happening is you know body fat is very sinister. It actually changes our hormones. It actually can function as a hormone within the body, according to some research. And uh, it just puts you in a situation of inflammation, and it, it fucks up the way your body deals with insulin so that the food you're taking in is so much more likely to, con to get to uh, convert it to fat versus being used for fuel. So um, sometimes you need to shock the system. Now, it doesn't have to be all or nothing. So you can still, as part of a weight loss strategy in the new year, Treat yourself in moderation. By the way, I have a progression for this, this flexible eating progression that I've used myself with my, my members of the dailyvg.com. Uh, you start with a four, three focused 
to flexible splits. And you can do this could be a weekly progression or it can be monthly if you want to take it even slower. But four three means four focus means you're eating pretty perfect for four days. And typically, let's say that's like Sunday through uh, Wednesday or Monday through Thursday, however you want to set it up. And then, you know, because weekends are typically, you know, there's social eating, drinking, fun, festivities. I don't want you to not enjoy your life, right? We talked about this earlier. It can be taken away from you in a moment. And food and, and, and libations, that's a big part of how people enjoy life with friends, family, that type of thing too, in moderation, right? Um, so I don't want to take that away from you because what's, what's the point of having six-pack abs if you hate yourself, you hate your life? All right, I mean, like, I, I get it for someone like me who actually makes money doing this, but if you don't even make money from it, like, what's the point? Yeah, I mean, it might get you laid, but like, at some point, you know, that person's gonna have to love you for something beyond the six pack. All right, these are different conversations. But um, in week one, it can be four or three, and then three flexible, meaning you still had that protein and produce foundation. You're doing the same thing you did those previous days, but maybe um, at, at lunch, uh, you know, you add in some extras in moderation, right? Or you say, you know, I'm gonna, at dinner, I'm going to have a couple slices of pizza and then a cup of ice cream. or And then maybe a, a, a bowl or two of avocado oil chips. Cleaner cheats when you can. And by the way, I have an amazing episode here. I'll drop in the show notes on how to uh, crack the cheat meal code. Uh, by the way, the BG Door podcast, iTunes, Spotify, wherever you listen. I just started doing recently uh, podcasts on YouTube, but all my episodes, uh, 250 plus and counting. 250 plus and counting are available on iTunes and Spotify, the BG Kajor podcast. So be sure to check those out too. But the progression has been simple, right? We go from four days focus, three days, still the, the foundation of protein produce, modified fasting, or just at least protein and produce. And then I add a little bit of flexibility. Uh, and as much as you can, try to backload that flexibility. If you start the day with too much flexibility, orange juice, pancakes, croissant, all right? you're going to end up eating nonstop the rest of the day. It's a slippery slope. So that's just pro tip. Okay. I've been there, done that. Um, but then the next week it's five days focused, only two days flexible. So now maybe only Friday and Saturday, you have flexibility where other days it's all locked in. So we added one more day of focus. We took away a day of flexibility. We're slow cooking the gains here, right? If you go all the way right away to, to perfect eating, many people quit by Tuesday, midday. Okay, we got to be honest about it. We want, we want this year to be different than last year. So we can't be doing the same shit we've always been doing because it's not working. Week three, six days focused, only one day flexible. And you have to pick the day based on your schedule. Maybe there's a work party on Thursday and you're going to make that flexible day Thursday, which is, by the way, the best way to do it um, versus trying to be like the Debbie Downer at a party. Oh, I can't, I can't have any carbs. I've been there and they think you're a freak. And then they try to sabotage you and make you feel bad about what you're doing. You know, it's fucking people. Uh, that's one thing I will tell you too. When you're pursuing your fitness, you do find out who your true friends are in the process. The people that try to support and help you, those are your true friends. The people that try to sabotage you, those are the toxic influences in your life that are always going to hold you back and anchor you from achieving your destined greatness. All right? So, uh, and then that fourth week, if you really want to challenge yourself, it's only seven days. Seven days of perfect eating on the piggybacking on the three weeks of progressively building up into it. So you know you can do it and you finish it strong, but you don't have to live that way. And by the way, the, the beauty of this, this flexible eating progression I use, it also works in terms of shifting goal once you get your ideal body weight. When I go fat loss mode, I typically am six one, six days focused, one day flexible. I always still give myself, and you see, I'm, I stay pretty lean at 41, keep it tight. I'll go baby, keep that ass, push it tight. Uh, but, um, if I really was trying to push myself, I might go 7-0. But um, when I'm trying to gain more muscle, I'll go 5-2. That's a way for me without having to count calories. That additional day of flexibility uh, gives me an, a little extra calorie and energy where maybe I want to go more muscle gain focused. During the holidays or special times of year, I go 4-3. Uh, and I, I can maintain my weight pretty well on that. It's when you, you, you know, like, because it's still four days of focus. Um, if I go... If it comes only three days of focus, that's when I'll start to smooth out and gain some weight. So I've created for myself through years of experience, this flexible eating continuum, whether it's by goal or by time of year or by season, where I can seamlessly adjust my diet and my focus and or flexibility to meet me where I'm at. So again, that this is a lifestyle for me. I don't I never have to worry about being perfect. I just have to worry about um, 
you know, being perfect most of the time and then scheduling and planning out that flexibility so that I don't lose myself and get caught in that slippery slope that comes with, um, you know, overeating or getting out of, out of good habits. The final thing I'll leave you with here, by the way, giving you, I don't know, at least an hour of my time here, a, a simple like, share, subscribe on YouTube would mean the world to us uh, to help us get this out to more good people like you. If you're on iTunes and Spotify, a five-star rating takes a second a five-star rating review. And all you got to say, by the way, is BJ Podcast Good. That takes you 10 seconds, no more than 10 seconds. That helps us get the word out there on iTunes and Spotify as well. And I appreciate you being here. I got a lot of stuff planned for you the rest of the year to get in the best shape of your life. We're going to burn fat. We're going to build muscle. We're going to get mobile. And we're going to have fun in the process for life, sustainability. The final tip, you got to change your mindset. There is a psychology that comes with weight loss. I'm not a therapist, though. Any trainer that's been in the game knows that you almost end up being one when you're working with people directly because this is a very emotional game. Uh, there's motivational and emotional ebbs and flows. It's a roller coaster. You know, some days you feel good. You see some instant results or things are changing. And then some days like the scale hasn't moved in two weeks. Well, you're too caught here. You're too caught here. You're not seeing the big picture. Anything in life. In and out of the gym it takes about a year to lay a rock solid foundation for that you can then build upon for the next three to five plus years. At about the ten year mark, now there's mastery. Twenty plus, you are literally the monk, a monk, uh, at what you do or what you're pursuing. Now, some people are turned off by that. Well, no, this is how it works. It takes time. You got to put in your ten thousand hours. You got to put in your reps. It's reps on reps on reps, sets on sets on sets day by day by day, week by week by week. So in terms of a final tip here, this bonus, these bonus tips, words matter. If you're going into this, and I, I, I know this from personal experience, uh, what a fat fuck I am. I hate myself. I hate the way I look. Or during the process too, as you lose weight, you lose weight or fat in a, in a genetically predetermined way. You can't spot reduce. It's going to happen the way that God intended, the way your genetics intended, all right? And you're going to be like, Sometimes you'll lose weight in the arms. It'll make your, comparatively, because your arms are smaller, uh, and you, it seems like you have more fat in your middle because you haven't gotten there yet. And you'll be like, you start pinching yourself. You're like, I hate this. I hate this. No, no, no. The, this, this, is, this is the type of negative self-talk that sabotages you and takes away from all the good things you're doing for your body. Don't worry about the outcomes. Focus on the process, right? If you're doing your daily mobility, your hourly mobility for at least a minute, your daily walk, you get three full body workouts a week, only 20 minutes each. You're eating mostly protein and produce, maybe a modified fasting approach like I outlined, getting a good amount of sleep. It's going to happen. And, and it's not linear. It's not going to happen in exact same way daily. Sometimes for two, four weeks, nothing happens. And all of a sudden you break through a plateau. This is how things work. These things are out of your control, but the process, the outcomes are a little bit out of your control. It's going to happen in whatever time it's going to happen. Maybe you're being stressed out in certain ways outside of work that is kind of messing you up too. You don't know. There's so many variables. But if you stay with the process, you always will push the needle forward over time. And it's going to take a, a full year. The other piece of it too, whether you're trying to lose weight or I hear this too. I'm a skinny guy. Well, that's you saying that. Even if someone else says it about you, only you can define yourself. No one else can do that you can, unless you allow them to. But you define who you are. And I've dealt with this a lot too. I can like, I'm just a fat guy. Well, and I say it to people too, and they look at me and it's like, what the fuck is wrong with this guy? Because I'm in good shape. But I, 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 inside, I'm still that kind of fun loving person I was when I was just a fat kid. I mean, we, we improve, we mature, right? But Uncle Baby Biscuits is the same person he was. You know, I, 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 I'm a joyful person. Um, I'm introverted, uh, somewhat antisocial, but the people that are close to me, uh, they know I'm a fun loving guy. Uh, I've always got your back and, um, I like to have, I, you know, I like to, uh, work hard, but I also like to uh, enjoy life in the spoils of life too. Good foods, nice trips, experiences. Um, it's really people that have fucked me up over the years. A lot, I, I do what I do online. I've dealt with a lot of negativity, a lot of hatred and criticism, and as someone who was already kind of uh, introverted, antisocial, ended up making me like hate people more than ever. But I gave them too much power. 
All I can do is share things that I know to be safe and effective that can help you become a better man today inside and outside of the gym. That's all I'm going to try to do here. Yes, it's a business. Yes, I need to make money to keep the lights on. But I put out a lot of value out there. I deserve to be rewarded from it financially. Okay? It is what it is. But if I keep, and I, I've been trying to work on this now, like I have to at some point stop calling myself a fat guy because I don't live that way. I, I live very differently than I used to. Um, and it's, 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 it's like, it's been so slow, but also like, it's been pretty fast too. It's been 20 years, but like, I see pictures of the way I used to look and it's like, I, it seemed like just yesterday. And, and by the way, at that time, I never knew I would look this way at 41. It's a true credit to consistency. It really is. And, and that, that's what I want to try to truly try to get through to you today too. Um, and don't have 2024 vision. 2024 vision, and I mean this to jar and jolt you right now, is for suckers. It's for everyone else right now that gets a Planet Fitness membership that they will stop using after 30 days or less. February, they're just going to wait till the next new year to get started again. Or chumps will buy a $2,000 Peloton bike thinking a stationary bike is going to solve all their problems. Big fitness. That's what fuck Peloton, by the way. Pass it along. But... I want you to have 2025 vision, meaning you're going to focus on the process we talked about and you're visualizing this whole time. You're not worried about what's happening Tuesday, Wednesday, or next week. You're just going to focus on the process and you're visualizing, you're dreaming about the person you're going to be at the end of this year once you have snowballed all of these winning habits and you'll have, you'll have put yourself in a position where you can sustain it and build upon it in 2025. But 2022 vision is too short-sighted. You're going to lose perspective. You're going to lose hope. And it's going to get you in a situation like everyone else, the eternal beginner, every January, every new year. Let's not do that this year. I believe in you. Otherwise, I wouldn't waste all this fucking time talking about it, okay? And not everyone's going to listen to me. Maybe it's next year that you'll listen. But I want you to have 2025 vision this year. I want you to commit to the process. And when you commit to the process... The outcomes always take care of themselves. All right. You got it. It's tough. You want to get results overnight, but if it's not sustainable, it's questionable. And the, developing this level of patience and discipline is the key to doing anything great in life um, in and out of the gym. So I really hope this helped you. It maybe went a little bit longer than I was hoping. And again, I, I'm, I, this isn't a lot of production value, or anything else. It's just me talking to you and sharing everything I've learned about losing weight. And even that language is bad. What does it mean to lose? It's a bad, it's a bad mentality. No, no, no. That's a subtractive mentality. That's a, a mentality of scarcity. And it's also kind of a negative thing, right? Like, I don't like myself. I got to get rid of this. No, no, no. I want you to think about more additive language. Burning fat is better than losing weight. And that's really the goal. Who cares how much you weigh uh, if you get rid of uh, excess body fat? You'll end up weighing the way you want. You need to weigh your natural kind of fighting weight, all right? It's not about being shredded. That's 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 a different conversation. But being healthy, you don't need to be shredded. And being healthy isn't about a certain weight or a BMI. Um, it, it's, it's, it's the weight that allows you to feel good, move well, obviously good, good blood work and good physicals from your doctor, but um, there's no number on a scale that's gonna give you the joy that a, a, that a body that can move well and uh, you know can do things to get you excited about life, to take advantage of life and do activities outside of work and that in the house and that type of stuff. That's the stuff you want to get going. And building muscle, adding strength, gaining mobility, focus on additive language. I don't want to get rid of this. No, that's, that's bad stuff. I want to add this. That mentality is very important. I'm telling you right now, because if you, it all comes back to like not liking yourself and it's, it's self-sabotaging language that'll end up defining you. So gain, gains, gains. So we talk about gorilla corn gains, but yes, if you're 50 pounds overweight, we got to lose that weight. But if you focus on burning the fat and building the muscle and adding the strength and gaining the mobility and getting more energy, the weight's going to come off. Trust me. Okay. Let me know which of the tips was your favorite. Post in a comment below. I uh, hope you guys uh, also, which one of these did you, do you find yourself struggling with the most or do you think you think you will struggle with the most? 
just post in the comments. And again, please be sure to like, share, subscribe, five star rating, and review is much appreciated. BJ Podcast Good is all I ask for. And uh, if you want ad free access to all of my workouts and programs at home, past and present, 1,000 plus options to choose from. First access, ad free access, exclusive access, get a free trial at the dailybj.com. Love you guys. Peace.